Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today's lesson is on these gorgeous patterned trout paintings. And actually we looked at some rainbow trout pictures and then were inspired and created our own um, fish with lots of scaly texture. And we used some horizontal lines coming across like the rainbow trout. And then, of course, put in our texture. What I did was I gave the kids um, the, the background paper first, and then we painted the background, and I'm going to demonstrate how we did that. We added some texture, and then we added some plants or coral in the background. And then the next day, we did our trout and added the pattern to the trout. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is quickly some kid examples of what their pictures look like. And hopefully this will inspire you to create certain color patterns or it might inspire you to create some ideas on the background. That's why I like to start off with some of my kid examples first. And we start thinking about what these colors look like. I mean, whether we like their painting or not, let's look at the color combinations they chose. And it could inspire us as artists to create our own combinations. Sometimes the color combinations work out good. Sometimes they don't. So it's good to look at examples. Everybody has their own different choices and their own different likes and dislikes. I love the combinations of these two colors, that, that beautiful green and pinks. Here's another one. This one, this artist chose to do more um, horizontal stripes here, which is kind of interesting. So we're looking at real fish, and then we're kind of making up our own fish, or and especially using our own colors, because we want to really uh, have some imaginary gorgeous color combinations. I like the way this artist chose to do, um, and these were, this grade is four, fourth grade, so these kids are about eight or nine. Um, I like the way the artist chose to put this, these large pieces of seaweed in the background here. It kind of looks very dramatic, the way they go behind. And if you do that, you want to vary the heights. Here's a low one, medium, and then these go just right off the page here. But it kind of looks like he's really swimming in the, in the bottom of the weeds, in the, in the lake or, this, or the ocean. There's another combination. And some cho chose to paint, you know, solid areas first, which is okay. You want to keep these lines horizontal. I love the detail in the face here. This is just beautiful. Very rich looking paintings with lots of texture. Love the layers in the eyes and mouth. These little details make it important for a painting. And then here is a third grade example. This was a fourth grade example. And so this is a third grade example. The fish came out beautiful. Again, the eye detail, mouth. And let me show you the, and I really like the, the gorgeous colors in the background here too. So you might like these colors to choose from. So you don't know, always have to pick a blue ocean. This is real pretty. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and show you how we did our backgrounds. The first day we took some larger brushes and we used horizontal strokes, that's strokes going across the page, and I'm going to do some light values. So I'm going to dip in some white and then I'm going to dip in the other half in this light blue right here. And I'm using just tempera paint and I'm going to go back and forth, do some light gradations of color going from lights to darks. I'll put some light down here. Back and forth. And then I'm just gonna do some white. And if I go straight into white, then I can do a light value up top here. And maybe a hint of purple, just for fun. There. So long strokes to easy, quick coverage. And the kids do this just within a few minutes. They paint their background. I'm just going over back and forth, long strokes. That's what I teach them. So that they the coverage is evened and smooth. This is just the background. It's not gonna matter much because we're putting in a lot of stuff. And once you put a lot of stuff in, the background kind of just mutes right out. Okay, so we let that dry. And as we're letting that dry, we wash our brush, and then we start in on some texture at the bottom, or we put in some of our, here's my third grade example here, 
some seaweed or plants or coral. You can do texture on the bottom with sponges. Here's another example here of some coral and some sponging. Dipping in sponging. I'm just going to dip into, I'm just using my brush here to demonstrate some kind of texture. I'm just dabbing my brush to give a little layer of sand or bottom. Now, instead of using murky, dark colors for the sand or bottom, say this is in a just a stream, you know, I'm choosing some, you know, as an artist, you have the power to choose some interesting colors here. And so I'm just going to do some of this red here at the bottom. And then you can, if you'd like, here's an example here of some bubble printing. And I just use a toilet tube, dip into some white paint, and kind of just press. Now, if you like it, a strong bubble showing like this, meaning the outline is clear, you can leave it like that, or just put another piece of paper on top and rub it, you're gonna mute it a little bit. And that'll just kind of mush it in and mute it. Or you can use a paper towel instead of another piece of paper, and even take your finger and gently blend the edges of the bubble in to the paper. And that way you're muting some of these edges here once you've printed it. And I'm just rubbing it with my finger lightly just so it kind of disappears and looks more natural right in there. But that's up to you. You can even use caps for bubble printing. That's just another extra fun technique. One of the techniques I absolutely love to do with my students is to take a piece of cardboard, and that's to print this gorgeous coral or seaweed. And this is so easy for the kids to do. Look here. We take and we dip it into some paint. And what I do is I pour a little bit of paint on the tray, just like this. And then we, I'll use just this edge, smooth it out. And we use just a very thin area of paint. We dip, dip in and tap a few times. Because I don't want a lot of paint when I'm dipping. It's just gonna make a puddle on here. Now, you don't have to use black. You can use any value colors you'd like. Some bright color though, so it'll show up. On the background here, I first did some purple, and then I did some darker on top. Even dark blue would look gorgeous with this. I'm doing black so it shows up nice for you. Um, but go ahead and then decide where you want your little seaweed plant and just press press and you're basically just pressing in some of the plants and it's a great way to get nice skinny thin lines without having to use a brush and it's a very fast technique which is really great too because in the art room we don't have much time if you're a student you realize you don't have much time in the art room um, and you have to move on so this is a quick technique and looks great and what I do is make sure you connect them together like that. And then the seaweed and plants grow up toward the light. So these branches, when you branch out, have it branch toward the light growing up. You don't want it branching down like that. So you make it go up toward the light. If you're going to have a branch on the underside, just have it point toward the light. And I'm just going to stop here for now. And again, variation. Some tall, some short, maybe another little one down here. Okay? You can even work on this side for a little bit of balance, too. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, that's basically what we do in one class period at school. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do your uh, fish. What I have the kids do is I start off, we start off by painting a T. So we paint, we're going to place, I'm going to just do a pink one. I'm going to place a straight line vertical. And if you don't have these fish shapes, you can always look online and draw a silhouette of a fish. So we go across here and then we go all the way down straight and holding your brush near the metal straight up. If you want to rest your arm on, the, on a table or the paper, and drag the hairs. And notice it's just the tip of the hair right here that's touching the paper to get nice 
controlled lines. In my class, we practice controlling lines so that we can create thick lines or thin lines. And I'm not gonna go all the way down uh, to the tail where it starts to fan out. I'll trace those lines as well here. And you wanna come out like a fan for these lines on the tail. So we start off with our T, and then we take that same color and we trace our lip areas. And if you wanna even pick it up, to do that and then we want pretty large sized eyes and if you look at some close-ups of fish they have layers in their eyes and this will just be the background layer let me show you on this gorgeous example here of a um, fourth grader look at that so we start off with a big color and then we layer and layer to make it more interesting and more realistic so once we have the, the T design, I have them take that same color with the T design and then do a row neatly of some scales down here. So one half is one color at the bottom and the other half is gonna be a different value of color. So then we put a row neatly placed of scales. Now you can do your scales slightly curved, it's up to you how you wanna do them. Now keep your fins separate. Don't go to the fin area in here. This is a fin, bottom fin, bottom fin, and then you've got a top fin here. So we do rows of uh, the scales, and then we switch colors, and we're gonna put, you can see how the bottom is one value of color, and then we're gonna choose another color for the top value. And I'm just gonna go into green right here. And I give my kids little tubs like this. These are like cat food containers, old cat food containers here that somebody donated. And just little buckets of paint. And do a row at the top. Now remember, this is the top fin. So I'm just neatly placing my scales in rows, just kind of dabbing. And then when the paint runs out, you know, your mind is going to say, hey, no more paint. I need more. Get in, get more. As soon as it starts looking like your edges are a little shabby, get more paint. Take your time on the scale placements. If you look here, when they're done nice and neatly, it's gonna be a better image. This was a great example here on my third grade. Look how nice and neat they did the brush control here. So then we do a layer. And then we're gonna choose, if you wanna take this color, you can do it while well, well, you have the brush loaded, go ahead and put a ring inside. So it almost looks like a hole now. And then take this color, repeating color is important. So I've repeated this color at the top, in the eye, look, around the mouth now. So very skinny lines around the mouth. So we repeat the color again. This helps bring unity to the whole fish. If I had tons of different colors, it would get kind of crazy. And then I'm gonna do all of the little fins that are below. So here's the top band, that's in one color. Then the fins below this are gonna be in this same color, right here. And then a little bit on the tail. And then what we do is we're going to go back and add another value of the bottom color. So if I have blue down here, I would choose a dark blue or a light blue to layer on top. I've got pink here. You see how I have two values at the bottom here? So, so I'm going to take a hot pink now and place hot pink or another kind of pink or even red next to it to give more texture. So now I have two values down at the bottom, gives more weight to the bottom. And some kids even went right on top of this line and added a row of dots as well. And then I'm taking the darker value and doing very skinny, and these are horizontal lines coming across. 
And when I did this with the kids, we all did this together. It was direct uh, instruction. So we all drew the T together and we all did, then we switched colors together. Um, if you're doing it at home, you can just pause the video and do each step. Now, if you want another little bit of layer of the dark color in here, you could put a little bit of the dark. I'm gonna give a little bit of dark in here too. And then the last color we add is the black. Now, say if you chose dark purple as your background, then you can use a dark purple paint um, for here. And then I do little dots in here just for some texture here. Little dots or scales. And then, of course, your pupil in the center of the eye for your black. And this comes out really uh, beautiful, as you've seen with the kids. Um, but there you have your fish. And then we go ahead and you can glue it on your background. Here's the one I just made. Now you can have your fish going, you know, straight across, it having it up like it's diving up, diving down. Now you notice, I kind of would like it another little bit of a something going down here. If it's going to be diving down, kind of getting some, eating some of the seaweed, um, I would want to put some seaweed in here so you can even adjust it afterwards. Um, that's why kind of planning the composition first kind of helps what you're going to do. And you can see in my students here, I really like this one where there's a lot of seaweed in the background. Um, but the placement, you plan the placement so you know how you're going to do your background. But I hope you enjoy painting your patterned fish. And um, if you... Uh, Want to let me know? Go ahead in the comments and let me know how you did. I'd love to hear from you, and uh, happy painting.